This is the Daily Tech News Show for Wednesday, December 27th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. Man, 2023 was a wild ride in tech news. Try to think back. Lawsuits, bank failures, antitrust investigations, AI, AI, even more AI. Some of it's even hard to remember now. So Joe put together a collection of our best conversations from 2023. Enjoy. We can all agree that the, the streaming world is going to look very different two years from now than it than it does right now. Right. Like we are we're going to see a lot of change. We're going to the big thing that's going to spark a lot of it is Comcast coming out of the agreements they made when they bought NBC and uh, Disney and Comcast resolving the ownership of Hulu. Of Hulu, Yeah. Uh, when those two things happen and they'll happen in the in very near to each other, I think in 2024, uh, suddenly everything, uh, everybody's holding their breath for that. And then we'll see what the moves are. The, there'll be a race to buy Warner brothers discovery. Uh, there'll be a race to buy Paramount. Whether or not those companies want to sell or not, I kind of think they will. But you know, the, <laughs> there'll be consolidation uh, for sure, and then then we'll see like what else happens in in when all that money starts sloshing around. Does does Netflix buy? Does Netflix sell? Does Disney sell? Some people are starting to think Disney might finally like sell to somebody else. There's no doubt that Bob Iger is brought back to make deals, right? You don't bring the greatest yep. deal of all time back if he's not going to be he's not there to just make sure that the office supplies get ordered. He's there to to <laughs> do something like but he's really good at it. But yeah, that's not he, that's not right. Yeah. But but I think that there was there was an element of of, of uh, uh chafing with Chapik and then there's the other side that is uh uh if you were going to have Disney buy Netflix or you were going to sell Disney to Apple, the biggest possible brontosaurus right. deals that you can imagine. Uh, uh, Iger's the man that would do it. When were we talking yesterday about owning a sports team? We were talking about Bomber, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I said Clippers that uh, I right. thought it was, I, f I found it. We're very close to owning. Well, not owning isn't the right word. A partnership? There owning. was a. So so we talked. Who was it? Was it you, Roger, that brought yes. up like sponsoring Little League? Well, yeah, because we were talking about sports. Like, does Little League count? And uh, and and someone in in our Patreon audience, one of the patrons, you know, you snooze, you lose. We're not going to do this for every Little League team out there, but uh, someone had the idea to send us like, hey, you can sponsor our team. So I think we're going to do it. It'll be on their uniforms. Oh, nice. Yeah. So can we I start, mean, in, are you going to start incorporating adorable. like baseball slang? Like we bunted that headline or? I mean, we kind of do that already yeah. naturally. So, yeah. <laughs> of all the baseball slang, went ahead and bunted that story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean. Way to, way to step up to the plate with the metaphor there. That was good. <laughs> Well, Tom good. Red knocked it out of the park with that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There yeah, you now go. you're getting there. That's it. Yeah, now you're throwing strikes. What do you think of this BuzzFeed thing? Because I, I feel like people have been overreacting to CNET. Not that there, there isn't some criticism there, but but CNET, you know, used a bot to do basically what the AP and Bloomberg have been doing. They just didn't do it night as as well. Um, whereas uh, BuzzFeed is is saying, no, we're going to use the good tool. We're going to we're going to use open AI. Sure, uh, yeah. And we and, and we're going to use it in the thing that made BuzzFeed what it is today, which is which is quizzes, so that your quiz really does react to you. Yeah. Look, whenever I have the opportunity to speak to young journalists, the one thing that I tell them that I know they are not going to hear from other people is get understand wherever you go, be it an internship or or a job, find out how they make money and then use your skills to be as close to that engine as you can. If you do that, then in a very chaotic world, you will almost assuredly be maximizing your ability to keep your job. These are businesses and they are trying to stay afloat and they are using your talents to do it. So when we look at AI, you have to understand what the low hanging fruit is. And trust me, this is going to take out elements of the journalism world for which can be replicated easy enough by AI. If you are worried about chat GPT, then trust me, you're going to be really, really worried about what comes 
down the pike in the next two years. So as far as BuzzFeed goes, I think it makes sense for them to do it. The CNET example, and especially the fact that some of their AI generated articles were sloppy is another old lesson in journalism. Sloppy is sloppy. Like it was sloppy when it was a human. It's sloppy when it's AI. If you do not have a strong editorial staff, if you do not have a strong copy desk, then stuff is going to get through that shouldn't. AI is not magical. It is a tool. And uh, the fact that it is being used at these outlets is not surprising. And anybody who wants to work at outlets, I believe should, especially if you're young, understand that this is just as important of a tool as Lexus Nexus was for research, yeah, as yeah. What processors are for for creating your copy, as CMS uh, programs are for t- distributing it around your organization. Learn to write prompts. Well, you may be tired of hearing about Chat GPT. S- sorry in advance. So CNBC says that Google is testing a Chat GPT like tool called Apprentice Bard. Microsoft is working to incorporate GPT four into. Bing search. Chat GPT is also now available in Microsoft Word, thanks to a third-party add-on from Creative Data Studios called Ghostwriter. Microsoft launched the Teams Premium that uses GPT-3 for intelligent recap, which automatically generates notes, tasks, highlights of meetings. Chat GPT Plus is now available for $20 per month. Reuters reported Wednesday that Chat GPT reached an estimated 100 million active users last month. I get these questions all the time. When's the next big tech innovation going to hit? When are we going to get that next iPhone moment? Why haven't we had anything new in technology in so long? You might have your answer here. There's no doubt that based on how people have understood ChatGPT, and if you even look at the conversations that are happening now with ChatGPT, the price of the product, whether or not it's biased in how you train the model, these are secondary conversations that you can only really have once you've found utility in this technology. People saying, I don't understand what you'd use this for. That doesn't mean anything to me. People saying, uh, I think it's overhyped. Sure, it's flashy, but uh, what you know, people won't stick around and keep using it. That doesn't mean much to me. What means something to me is, are there a lot of different uses and what kinds of fears has it evoked? Uh, because if it evokes fears, that usually means it's really good at something to get that kind of fear evoked. I think this has all the hallmarks of something that is used in a multiple variety of ways, and it's misunderstood. Uh, USC Associate Professor of Computer Science Jonathan May wrote on the conversation, ChatGP doesn't try to write sentences that are true. It tries to write sentences that are plausible. And I think Wrapping your head around that gives you an advantage in understanding ChatGPT. Its danger isn't that it's going to replace book reports that stop people from thinking, because it's not good at that, at least not yet. Maybe a future version will be, and then we'll deal with that. What it's good at is constructing sentences, at giving you first drafts, at doing things that we haven't even figured out how to do with it yet. When Google panics about ChatGPT, and I thought it was, it was, it, 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 it has been below them, in my opinion, to uh, poo-poo OpenAI as this small startup. And we, we actually care about truth. The last time that they had an existential threat, they called it the big blue wave, was Facebook. We are not back in, 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 in the 2010s. You know, we are, we are in a different world when it comes to these, uh, uh, this, this ad market. If chat gpt materially reduces our reliance on the way that we think about search and or bing becomes a more a primed competitor i find that the first one is more likely than the second one but a combination of the two would do the same thing then google is in trouble i don't think it's going out of anything catastrophic but can google get yahooed Maybe. Then maybe that's why I could ask ChatGPT. Make a generic list of Dr. Pepper alternative names because those are always my favorite. <laughs> store brand cherry cola. Store brand vanilla soda. <laughs> store brand caffeine free cherry. Store cola. brand. It's taking our jobs time. <laughs> Can I drink instead of Dr. Pepper, but that will taste like Dr. Pepper? <laughs> 
If you're looking for a drink that tastes similar to Dr. Pepper, but without the caffeine or high sugar content, you could try some of these alternatives. Dr. Pepper flavored seltzer water. Dr. Pepper flavored <laughs> sparkling water. Dr. Pepper flavored unsweetened iced tea. Dr. Pepper flavored syrup mixed with sparkling water. Did, did you get Chat GPT like 1.2, Tom? Are you on a uh, maybe. deprecated model? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thank you, Roger Chang, for compiling these. Uh, computers have been feature plot points in many movies since the 1950s, but only a few computers have become so well known that their names are part of the pop culture canon. And the following quiz is designed to test your knowledge of famous movie computers. Mm -hmm. Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 A Space Odyssey Hell. is regarded as one of the... Computers? Who said Who said what? I heard something. I said Hell. Mm, not complete. How how nine thousand? How nine thousand? Dang it! Nice. Correct. Correct. All right. In the 1983 techno thriller War Games, David Lightman, a Seattle high school student by math played by Matthew Broderick, hacks into NORAD supercomputer responsible for automating the launch of nuclear missiles. What is the name of the supercomputer that nearly causes World War Three? Oh man! I'm gonna guess a Cray. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Cray was big back then. All right. Yeah, but they oh, called man. it something proprietary it's for the movie. Yeah, it, it probably was a Cray. I think you're actually right about that, Allison, but it had a name. It's right uh, on my, what the about tip of my tongue. Douglas. No. Douglas oh. the Comp. No. no. <laughs> I tried. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Uh, <laughs> like Burger King, you could have, have it your way? You could have this your way. <laughs> I'm cheating. Whopper is what the, the chat room is saying. Quarter pounder. Whopper. W-O-P-R. Yes. yes, of course. In the movie The Terminator, a killer robot is sent back in time to stop the birth of a future human resistance leader from being born. What is the name of the computer system that becomes self-aware and launches a nuclear attack on humanity and becomes Skynet. the ruler? Skynet. Skynet. Yes. Skynet. Skynet. Yeah. The Matrix helped define how people refer to artificial reality that's been presented as real. In the movie, what is the name of the computer program that designed and created the Matrix virtual reality world? I should know that. Red Pill. No. I don't know. Ring. <laughs> yes, you all forgot it's... the rule immediately. Do you, you, real, you well, realize that? You were that done right? talking. No, we're not <laughs> We're saying we don't know. I... Oh. Sarah not doesn't know. It? Sarah, what is your guess? Uh, red pill. No. Wrong! <laughs> he just wants to push the button. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The chat room says it's the architect. It's called John Wick. Oh, Kaplan it's the architect. John? John ah, Wick. Kaplan John. In the 2013 movie from Spike Jones. <laughs> in, I'm just going to read it the way it's written. Oh, I know. The, I know. In Len. the movie 2013 Spike Jones movie, yes. her... A professional oh. letter writer, Theodore Twombly, played by Joaquin Phoenix, falls in love. Len, just say your Sarah. name. Sarah. Sarah, yes. Scarlett Johansson. No, that is. Wrong. Yeah. The, I, 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 never mind. Keep going. Keep, right. keep, 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 keep talking. Fine. Joaquin Phoenix falls in love with an AI powered voice assistant voiced by Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> what is, does the AI voice assistant name itself? Oh, God. Sarah. Yes, her. Sarah. No, no. Was it her? Really? No, that's not. I'm, I'm sorry. Wrong. I, also, <laughs> also said, Tom. You said her Tom, in the. In Tom, you are. Wrong. Yes. I yes. know, but I thought they were you trying to. You said it in off. the question. I'm like, oh, it's her. her. No, you're right. Oh, you're right. That's, right. The, like name the, that's the name of the movie. That's the name of the movie. And I don't know what it is. Oh, I know. Wait, Len. Uh, is it Sam? Yes, uh, uh, it is. It's Samantha, actually. Samantha. But, but yeah, oh, okay. Sam for short. The 1982 Disney cult movie Tron explores a anthropomorphized look at a struggle between good and evil inside a computer mainframe. Tron is the name of the protagonist that is tasked with defeating the big bad program that runs the mainframe. What is the name of that program in the movie Tron that runs the mainframe computer that Tron must defeat? Darn it. Oh, I, I don't that movie too, and I don't know it either. Proton, Allison, Proton. Allison, wrong. you are wrong. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, Sarah. Sarah, go ahead. Uh, electron. Wrong. No, no, no. Len. <laughs> Len. Uh, Flynn. Wrong. Flynn was one <laughs> of the inventors. Allison. Neutrino. Allison. <laughs> <Wrong>. <laughs> Neutrino. <laughs> 
Master Control yes. Program. MCP. Oh, wow. In the movie The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, what is the name of the supercomputer that is built to calculate the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything? Ah, oh, so I was name. close, but I, I don't, don't know, know that computer's name. 42 was the answer. Mm. Sarah. People are saying Earth. Go I'm ahead, sorry. Sarah. Smart computer. Wrong! Len. Len. Boosted toot. Wrong! <laughs> so close. <laughs> All right, uh, Allison, we have Go a bunch ahead. of votes for deep thought. Oh. Hey, okay, you know what? Um, takes a village, I suppose. There you go. Fine. <laughs> yeah. We collectively know the answer. Taking the credit. She, she's oh, sharing not. the credit. <laughs> she's she's encompassing all of us in the credit. Have you all heard of Silicon Valley Bank? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. You have now. I'm going to call it SVB for short. It is the bank for about half the U.S. tech sector, very roughly speaking. SVB made conservative investments. I think that's misunderstood. These were too conservative. That's the problem. If interest rates rise, funding starts to decrease. Revenue might also start to decrease. And if that happens, those deposits get smaller. What SVB ran into is that those rising interest rates meant that they had to take a loss on those long-term investments that they had. The plan was to make take the money from the stock sale, cover the loss from selling the bonds, and invest some of that money in short-term securities with a higher payout. Except announcing a stock sale made some people assume things were worse than they seemed. That caused the stock price to drop. That meant you couldn't get people interested in buying the stock. That made people even more worried as the stock price dropped. And investors, including Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, Union Square Ventures, and Coach U Management, started advising clients to pull their deposits. That stock sale collapsed. They couldn't sell the stock. And as you found out Friday, within a day, the state of California had stepped in to take over the bank and hand it over to the FDIC. That's where we were Friday. A lack of trust within the Silicon Valley community played a part here with the, the run on the bank. Why, why do you think we saw this? The more you talk about crypto and the more you talk about decentralized finance as an alternative, and the more you try to say the existing financial system is corrupt or untrustworthy, or they loan out more than they have you know, in hand, which some of those things are true, you can e pretty easily start to chip away at a fundamental trust in a bank. Yeah. And then when you have that combined with just the Twitter brain thing, it's pretty easy to trigger a run, maybe arguably way, way too easy. I think this system is suffering from a macroeconomic shock about how fast interest rates have risen, but that was not a surprise to anybody. So to have bought 10 year bonds that in some cases had a like less than 2% yield without putting into any into place any financial mechanisms to hedge against an interest rate rise was definitely banking malpractice. I think this is one of the other big surprises actually was that the community and and high profile members of the community did not come out with messaging to rally around Silicon Valley Bank faster and louder. You would think that they would rally and the impact of losing this bank and, and losing access to those kinds of like specific sector tailored services, which by the way, if they exist at other banks or they existed on Friday, they don't today, <laughs> is going to be a massive, it's going to have a huge impact. There is like a, a naked, sweaty panic that you can smell from LA coming from Silicon Valley right now in terms of like the economy. And so a lot of things are going to freeze up. We do have a forest that's very, very overgrown, right? Because mm -hmm. of this like zero rate environment, there are a lot of things that exist now that wouldn't exist in a tougher economic environment. And a lot of that's going to get burned out faster than people expected. But if you have a good idea and a great business plan and product market fit, I think you're still going to get funded, but it's going to be a lot harder. OpenAI <laughs> released GPT-4 today. 
<laughs> Google can't catch a break. Uh, they, they had the whole thing with Bing and AI last month. Uh, today, they're like, this time we've got it. Microsoft's things later this week. We're going to put out all our AI news and open AI is like, hey, we've got the next model of GPT, GPT-4. If you're like, okay, GPT-4, it's one better. What's better about it? It can accept text and images <laughs> as inputs. Uh, so, for example, it could write a caption if you give it an image, or you could give it an image and say, please describe what's in the image. They threw it against the uniform bar exam. So chat GPT was in the 10th percentile on the bar exam. This is not good. This is not a lawyer you want. Chat GPT-4 scored 90th percentile. Hmm. Uh, in the biology Olympiad, chat GPT was 31st. Uh, chat GPT-4 with vision was in the 99th percentile. Wow. This won't visually appear that different because it's going right. to sound just as authoritative. But, but behind the scenes, it yeah. actually might be right more often. Your mileage still may vary. You shouldn't rely on it. I think that's why Altman's coming out saying, don't yeah. think this thing is perfect. Don't rely on it. You still need to fact check it, but it should be better. Overall, jobs will be newly created because of this. It's always the short term that where the problem is, right? Are right. you going to be like accountants and make it through just fine and even have more jobs? Or are you going to be like factory workers where your job just doesn't exist? Go train for another one because they exist. Uh, and that, that's what you have to look out for. AI whispering, your mm -hmm. future career. AI whispering. And I'm, I'm I have a friend who's a Hogwarts. prompt engineer. It's a, and that's going to be a job that is already a job. And it's just going to be a bigger right. job. Lab grown meat. If, okay, no humans are being harmed, right? You're just culturing out of cells. You could, you could, you could donate your own cell. Would you eat Google. yourself, Tom? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. <laughs> would you, you look delicious. Would, would you eat it? I would. Oh. You yeah. would? You like no hesitation. I, just, I don't feel like, yeah, like if people aren't harmed. If no it one's harmed, tastes, right? If it, the taste is. Let's really assume it's all consensual. Like, it's the, like I don't really like lamb because you know, in the venison category, it's a little too gamey for me. Do I like human? Don't know. Never tried. Don't know. Yeah. But, <laughs> but what if it is tasty and no one dies? You never cooked a little bit of yourself, I suppose. <laughs> no, I have not. Haven't done that. I yeah. would need to. There's so much about it that just goes against our basic humanity because we're just, you know, we, we don't approve of this and we never have. And there's yeah. also disease reasons and all this other stuff. So there's a there's a deep instinctual resistance to it. Yeah. 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 And I feel that. But at the same time, I feel like I wouldn't sit down and go, all right, let's dig in. But I do think I would say, well, let me taste it. This is 100 yeah. percent a no for me, guys. I don't know what the hell you're really. Like. You're like, yeah, <laughs> you're you're the opposite Absolutely of Sarah. Absolutely no like, on the no. far extreme. But way. like, but but <laughs> because I love it. like because it gives you the willies, or because there's some sort of no. deeper, it's, like what? It's the, like, but it's not. You don't <laughs> hurt anybody. It's so. the elephant answer. We develop a taste for lab-grown human. Suddenly, people are going to want free-range human, and that's a dark path we're walking oh, down. But no, no, not necessarily, because we've only had lab-grown human. Like, I don't want humans on the range. You no. say that now, but I want that you, lab human. What if you really, really like it? What if you're like, oh man, I'm going to go? But out like, but if I, I really I, like it, then like I don't gateway. need to like yeah. go back to the old way of doing. How things. tender Listen. Scott looks. You go out there, you tell you, hey Scott, let's go camping, and the next thing you know, you're hunting Scott for sport, and <laughs> and then. Listen. It's you know, BQ. I know you've had la lab grown, but have you ever had free range? Like yeah. you, it's a, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh man. Who's going to say, have you ever had free range? Like, no, that's not what we do. Someone's going to say, say that. It. Yeah. But it's only a matter of time. You're not thinking like a billionaire, Sarah. That's the thing to remember. Yeah, you got to uh, think like a billionaire. I what if it was like a home that. kit? That's mm. <laughs> so like, good home. You, you order a kit and it just says like, yeah, just you, you scrape off some skin cells. It's not even going to hurt. And then, you know, in, in a week, uh, you've got a lovely bur a burger patty. But if someone goes like human, I, I might yeah. say a nice, well, a nice cut, like a nice steak cut. I think you of want lab grown. Like a yeah. with a sauce, like barbecue <laughs> sauce, pulled, pulled, pulled human. <laughs> oh, we really need Chris Ashley and Rod Simmons on this. <laughs> yeah, just, just barbecue, the barbecue and tech human ones. tech. Yeah, 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 maybe a little, maybe a little coleslaw in there. I don't know. Oh. That's always the the conversation too. Is forget whether it's human. Let's assume it's not. Uh, vegetarians, vegans, okay to eat lab grown. Vegetarians, I, I feel like vegans have a case to be like, no, you're still exploiting the animal to get the cells in the first place you know draw yeah, the line just, vegetarians yeah, vegetarians if they're doing it for health might still not want to eat it because it's got cholesterol or whatever 
Um, mm-hmm. But if vegetarians doing it for anti-animal cruelty might be like, well, it's not cruel to the animal, right? They barely yeah, but if But in the case of human meat, you, let's say we're eating Tom meat, uh, big, big, big steak, Tom steaks, okay? You uh, you did consent to that, though. Your genetic material was taken from you, but with Correct. your consent. And let's say that, that so we're, vegans we're can eat human meat. Yeah, vegans can eat human meat. I think, I think Scott's right. Vegans yeah. can only eat human meat if yeah. it's a, if it is is consensual. Or if consent. or if we elevate the intelligence of the cows with ChatGPT so that they can then consent, I, then that's vegan oh, friendly too. There, right? there was uh, hadn't thought of it that way. That's how we should do it. Make the cows smarter. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> the Douglas Adams yeah. did this 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's consent. the restaurant at the end of the universe. Yeah. Yeah. A study estimated that 45% of people in the U.S. older than 50 play video games at least once a month. That's 52.4 million people, which is, I think, a lot. I think this sort of stuff is going to run out of runway pretty quick. And the reason I say that is when you say... 50 and older, you're often talking about 80s and 90s kids Mm. who were the first big generations to have this cultural phenomenon in their lives in such a major way. We were the ones going to software, et cetera, and waiting for the launch of the PlayStation 1. And we were the ones waiting for all of that. And we're the ones that are really into ecosystems like Steam and Xbox and PlayStation and everything else. I feel like, I feel like that, that this, this kind of questioning 10 years from now is going to be pointless because the 40-year-olds are playing even more than we did. Well, yeah, it's going to be about who's playing the brain implant game. Yeah, right, 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 right. We are less than a year or two away from giving AI a film script and then watching that film the same day. Production costs are going to go to zero. Within five years, great-looking films will be made this way. Within 20 years, almost all. All films will be made this way. Maybe I'm having some of the early heartache. I don't want to. I don't want to see these weird things yet. I want. I want. I want people to be the craft. And I'm a little nervous about this. This kind of prediction, but he may not be wrong. And it hurts him as bad as it would hurt anybody, right? He's a well. No, a he, writer he conveniently and... let the writers still be there. You just <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I, I, you know what? I guess you could argue like, oh, uh, you won't give the AI a film script. You'll do a prompt to get the AI to write the film script because we're close to that already. Right. So you yeah. won't even need to give it a script. I wonder if non-AI movies become a genre. Oh, that's interesting. That Ooh. seems that seems like. Ooh, yeah. Maybe that's what it does. You you buy AI templates for the types of movies you want. I want a World War II movie, and so it will pull all the assets and and all the data you would need, oh, and yeah. then you Plot feed it. Plot on demand. That reminds me of the worry that digital tools were going to get rid of big studio label music. Mm. They didn't. No. We, we now have a much broader, wider base of music available because more people can easily make it, but you still have Taylor Swift. You still have BTS. You still have Morgan Wallen uh, because you need the labels... Because most people don't want to sort through everything else. They want someone to curate it and be like, oh, yeah, this is the label says this is good. Great. I'm going to listen to that. If I don't feel like there's enough Mad Max Fury Road follow up and I do feel that way, um, I would love it if I could accurately depict the kinds of movies that George Miller would make in the mm-hmm. wake of the success of Fury Road and just do sequel after sequel <sighs> after sequel and, I, and, and do it in a way that's 100 percent what I want. That feels so far away to me, but maybe he was 100% right, and it's closer than I think, and and I can have that experience then. But, you know, we're still trying to make fingers look right, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Verge uh, posted an article uh, just a few minutes ago that many of the Reddit communities that did go dark um, in solidarity um, say they will be going dark indefinitely. There's a lot of power in the mods on That's Reddit. That's right. Exactly. Which is why it is successful in a way that Facebook and Twitter are not at moderating because you you have the niche communities each set their own standards that are appropriate. That is a lesson learned in the 90s on bulletin boards and forums that mm. Twitter and Facebook mm-hmm. didn't learn from and tried to make it be like one set of moderation for everyone. And that to me has always been one of the biggest challenges for those big open platforms. Reddit avoided that, but to your point, when you give moderators that much power, 
that means they've got power that they are now exercising. It's kind of in amazing that Reddit is still around. It, it, it's been sold. It's been spun back out. It's been made independent. It's had a huge CEO controversy. Uh, it's, it's survived through a lot. Maybe that's what Huffman's thinking is like, oh, this is not the worst we've ever seen. Because he kind of I mean, he kind of says that in that memo. He's like, we've been through a lot of worse things before. We'll make it through this one. Roger has been in a war with coyotes on his street. Oh like, no. You've been talking about this a lot. Because they're they they're, come and so party on his lawn at night and wake him up and oh, eat all no. of his like well, they, lawn they stuff. They eat and... your garbage and stuff or no, what? No, no, they don't eat the garbage. So it turns out they have a den like a block over. According to one of the neighbors, uh, they're not paying um, rent for it, though. If this pedestrian that I talked to the other night, uh, when I was chasing a couple of coyotes away from his path, um, because it was night, he was trying to walk home, uh, he said, "Yeah, I saw one of the ladies in that house over there, like an old lady, like throwing them food, like chicken bones." It's tempting to feed them too, because yeah, they seem cute and stuff, and then it's like, but no, and they're very often skinny, so they look hung like you know mm -hmm. they're hungry. Not one. They look not, like dogs. One of them so skinny anymore. We would sometimes see them, depending on where we were. And I mean, I don't think I ever saw six at once, but they would not mess with us. But probably because they were just like, mm, no, yeah, too much, too, too much effort yeah. to take yeah. that dog. Um, I mean, I wasn't intimidating, but uh, I think they weren't that it, hungry yet. My dog would look at them like, who are these dogs without no leash? Where are their people? Because he didn't yeah. know, you know, and they would just sort of look at us like, not today. And mm -hmm. there have been a couple of times one has just run up straight behind me, like brushed me on the hand, and like you wouldn't notice until they like ran right by you. Wow! And there were what are they doing on your ones. lawn? Like they're just they're hanging out, eating the chicken yeah, bones that the neighbor left. Yeah, yeah. they just chicken sit there. They literally just sit. There. It's like a living room. <laughs> and then the younger <laughs> they love you, Roger. Just admit it. The, the younger You're ones the were coyote chewing whisperer. up my lawn sprinkler, and they've been chewing up the drip lines. And oh, then they've been also yeah. tearing out the grass from the lawn because. They're bored because they obviously what aren't do they working want from for the their grass? meal. Hey, you want to pick oh, up some chicken from the chicken lady and head down to no, Old they're Man just Chang's goofing house? Off. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two of eat some grass and yeah. screw up the spring. Me at Chang's yeah. 15. Sam Altman out as CEO of OpenAI. In a statement, the company said that following a board review, he was deemed not consistently candid in his communications. CTO Mira Marathi will become interim CEO. A lot of things happened in the roughly two and a half working days <laughs> before a holiday weekend over at OpenAI. You may have heard it in the news. Sam Altman is returning as OpenAI CEO. He will not take a position at Microsoft, which was announced on Sunday, after all. And Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella says Microsoft supports Altman's return to OpenAI. But... Altman does not retain his previous board seat. The Beatles have done final songs quite a bit in their career, but this one might be the one. Let's enter Peter Jackson. Mm. You know, that Hobbit kid. Using Wiley. machine learning to eliminate noise from recordings of Beatles video in order to create the Get Back documentary, the software was used to separate John Lennon's vocals and then use it to build a new track. Is this... The final last song from the Beatles. <laughs> I think with AI, it could be maybe mm -hmm. the first of many, to be honest. Yeah. Is it well, the last of the Beatles or the last of the human Beatles? I would very much recommend 12-minute mini documentary about putting this together. Really, really well done. The documentary takes a lot of pains to make it clear that everybody's happy about this. Everybody <laughs> would have loved it. John would have loved it. The Beatles were a very technologically forward band which is when they were operating, which is all true. Uh, so they, they want sure. people to not I mean, be mad that there's a new Beatles song. But I yeah. think it's great. I think it rules. Let's also point out, the AI part of this was not creating any voices. The machine learning part was to separate out John Lennon playing the... Uh, piano in his New York apartment and him singing. Yeah, it's a good example of how to use these kinds of tools. So 
you could argue, if you want to be real pedantic, that yes, parts of John Lennon's vocals had to have been created because when you separate it out from the piano and the line noise and the yeah. room echo, uh, it wouldn't have all of John's. And and yes, the algorithm does fill in the gaps and make it sound normal, but that's all it's doing. Uh, it's no yes. different than when you uh, delete uh, that, you know, half naked person in the back of your beach photo and it just fills it in with sand and blue. It's just really good at it. It's able to do it in a way that you don't notice. So it's the perfect way that machine learning does add things, but only adds things you want not synthesizes it. They didn't say, hey, pretend you're John. Imagine you're John Lennon sitting yes. in a studio and then created from whole cloth. They said, take what's here, pull it out, fill in whatever's missing so that it sounds good and it works. Yeah, what, what I just don't want people to take away from this is the idea that they trained a model yeah, on there's no John simulated Lennon's voice. John out and there, then, and like, then by yeah. the, at the at the very end of the song, he says, and Walmart Black Friday deals begin <laughs> on Wednesday. Like, like there's not uh, anything created. I'm a like fan that. of the Utah Jazz. I wonder if this is a great example of the the line. Now, I'm not saying we'll never cross, but we're not going to cross for a lot longer than people think between machine generated content and human content. What made the Beatles special? was that collaboration between yeah. John and George and Paul and Ringo in the room where they would bounce ideas off each other. That is not something that just, I've trained it on all the Beatles music, now simulate some Beatles music. It'll give you Beatles sounding music, yeah, but it won't have that. It won't have the new thing that happened because they were collaborating off it. Something that, yeah, they didn't really have this time because George and John aren't with us anymore, but Paul knew what that was. And there was some in the history from 95 and even before that Paul could simulate in a way that a, a algorithm could. Oh my God, that was a fun ride back through the year. Uh, but that's it for this episode. Thanks to everyone who supported us throughout 2023 at patreon.com slash DTNS. Now, don't forget, there's no live shows this week, but we will be back to live shows on our 10th anniversary, January 2nd, and back to our normal schedule, Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. However, this week, our holiday programming continues with our 2023 Tech Predictions Results Show tomorrow. See how we did. Talk to you then.